Hello again and welcome to another Black Templar Friday. That is right, my brothers. The righteous zeal of the crusade has come upon me once again. No longer do I feel the urge to kill people at range with demolisher cannons and lasguns, but instead I wish to get close to them, to be it amongst the enemy, to see my enemy face to face, eye to eye, and to purge him with bolter and blade. It is the time of the Black Templars. For those of you that have no idea what is going going on right now. I used to do a regular episode called Black Templar Fridays when I was getting into my Black Templar for the first time. And you know what, guys? Now that I'm doing this gig full time, I feel like I have the capacity to explore more armies and to be able to do more fun videos. So let me know what you think. Before we go any further in this video, get down in that comment section below and let me know if you want to see Black Templar Fridays return on the regular basis. Let me know right down in that righteous crusade section boys that righteous comment section without further ado let's dive straight into this so today guys i want to talk about how you can get into the assault doctrine from turn one with not one not two but three units straight off the bat you can get into assault doctrine and you do not need to wait until turn three and let me tell you as a black temper player this is absolutely vital I like to run Black Tide. I like to run all combat all the way, all gas, no breaks. That is my style. And that means that typically I'm in combat from turn one or turn two, and I'm just hacking away, grinding through the enemies of the Emperor, smashing them to pieces. And you know what makes that job all the more easier? Being in the Assault Doctrine. Because especially in this age of Armour of Contempt, which is obviously fantastic for the Black Tide, but in, an, in this age of Armour of Contempt, if we're facing down other power armoured bozos, then we need to be rocking something better than an AP1 chainsword. We need all the armor penetration we can get. That either that's AP2 chainsaw, that's AP4 power saw, that's AP everything on everything else. We need as much armor penetration as we can get our hands on from turn one. And like any good Templar player, we often want to be doing that in combat. We got some shots. I got some shooting. I can show you some shooting, boys. But we're all about that combat by purging them with the blade. That's how we do it. And what I like to do with my Black Templars, especially with my Black Tide, is I like to make sure that I've got three blocks of crusaders in assault doctrine from turn one ready to rock and roll and let me tell you it makes a huge difference a huge huge difference so i'm going to do a quick tip tactical black templar video guys and let's talk about how we can get into assault doctrine with three units straight off the bat let's dive straight into this so the first way of getting into the assault doctrine from turn one is actually not found in your black templar supplement but it's found right in the basic bitch space marine codex and that is a stratagem called adaptive strategy it costs two command points and you can use a stratagem in your command phase if a chapter warlord from your army is on the battlefield and a combat doctrine is active for your army, select one chapter core unit from your army that is on the battlefield. Well, let me tell you, Crusaders are core. Until the start of your next command phase, each time model in that unit makes an attack. The Devastated Doctrine, the Tactical Doctrine and the Assault Doctrine are considered to be active for that attack. So it is pricey and unless you're getting the most out of it by using like guns and by using blades, it might be considered too priced, too CP to just get one unit to the Assault Doctrine. It's so worth it, guys. It's so Your opponent can do nothing about it. They can't stop it. They can't mess with it. You can just put yourself in the Assault Doctrine, in every Doctrine, hell. And every doctrine it shouldn't be looked, you know, overlooked because you can be like using pistols and everything. You can be doing shots. You know, putting a big unit of shooting crusaders into this old doctrine means that not only are they getting shots that are AP one with all those assault weapons, but they're also able to get AP one in combat when they're smacking people with like rifle butts and fists and combat blades and all that kind of good stuff. So it's really good on any unit. But if you're taking like a big block of shooting crusaders, this is fantastic as well. It means your shooting crusaders don't need to worry about getting tagged in combat like that. They can happily fight their way out given an opportunity. Now I'm going to be totally honest with you. I normally just go, I don't care. I'm just going to put on a big block of 20 choppy crusaders and I'm just going to mess up my opponent in combat with as many AP2 chainsaws as possible. But I thought I'd mention the shooting crusaders because it means you can get the most out of that 2C. But realistically, it's all about the, the close combat guys. We know that. Everyone knows that. We're Black Templars. It's by the blade. Fuck the gun. That's how we like to roll, right? So that is the first way you can do it. Now, the next two ways you can do it are found in your Black Templar Codex, okay? And the first one is very, very simple, okay? The first one is the Crusader's Helm. 
Now bear in mind, obviously you have to spend CP on your relics these days. So this will cost you a CP to take the Crusader Helm. But if you take the Crusader Helm, firstly, it adds three inches to the range of the bear's aura ability, so a maximum inches of nine, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. But the main thing is, in your command phase, command phase again, Select one friendly Black Templar's core unit that was the 9 inches of the bearer until the start of your next command phase. Each time model in that unit makes attack, the Assault Doctrine is considered active for that attack instead of the currently active Doctrine. So this one's a little bit different because this one is like you might have been in like the Tactical Doctrine and you then have to be in the Assault Doctrine. So this one makes it not as good for maybe like shooty guys like we said. But this one is great. You just go turn one. I don't care that my guys are in like the Devastate Doctrine, they're never going to use it straight into the, the Assault Doctrine with these guys. Fantastic. Now we're looking at 40 Crusaders. 20 from the Stratagem, 20 from this Relic in the Assault Doctrine. Absolutely fantastic. Now that means all of those attacks from all of those guys are going to be AP2 in combat, which is great. Now bear in mind, we do have to do all this stuff in like our command phase. So if the enemy gets a turn 1 drop on us and they manage to get into combat with us... You know, we have to do a round of combat in their turn without being in the Assault Doctrine. But we, we just have to survive that one round and then we get into our own turn and we get into Assault Doctrine and we'll have a great time. To be honest, I tend to find that most enemies don't get a turn one charge. It can happen, of course it can happen, guys. But a lot of enemies aren't getting a turn one charge when they go first. You either get the turn one charge on them because they come sprinting towards you and then you go towards them and then charge them. Or it ends up happening in like turn two or something like that. But either way... You tend to find that you don't need to worry about it not being active in your uh, in their first turn if they get the drop on it. You just may need to make sure it's active in your first turn and beyond when we're talking about the Assault Doctrine. But yeah, Crusader Helm, really simple. Pick a unit within 9 inches. You're now in the Assault Doctrine. Absolutely great. Again, nothing the enemy can do to interact with that. You are now have got 40 Crusaders. You've got two core units in the Assault Doctrine. Absolutely fantastic. Now, the last way that you can get the Assault Doctrine active is by using your prayers. Of course, there's a way of doing Assault Doctrine with the Litanies of the Devout. We are all about prayers. Screw them, because we want nothing to do with them. We like prayers. So the Litanies of the Devout, you can use Fervent Acclamation. If this litany is inspiring, select one Templar vow that is not in effect and select one friendly Black Templar core or Black Templar character unit within six inches of the priest, that unit gains the effect of that vow. Now, the vow that you're going to want to do, you're going to want to flip over a couple of pages and take a look at your vow, and you are going to want to look at accept any challenge, no matter the odds. Now, normally you don't want this army wide, but you don't mind having this on, let's say, like a unit here and there, because you're using it really for the advantage, you're not really looking for the passion of this, okay? So while this unit is within game range of enemy units, if a combat doctrine is active for your army, this unit gains the bonus of the assault doctrine instead of the combat doctrine that is active. Each time this unit fights, still the fight is resolved, add one to the attack characteristic of models in that unit. This is not cumulative with the additional attack granted by the shock assault ability. So, this is a really, really good ability, but there's a couple of things you've got to be mindful of. Firstly, you might just straight up fail it. I mean, it's a litany. Unless you're using, like, Grimaldus. I mean, to be fair, you should be using Grimaldus so you get off on a 2+. plus. But if you're not, you know, using Grimaldus, you might not get this litany off. And that's just something you need to be aware of. It's not a guaranteed thing like the first two, but you can make it pretty much like it's going to go off every turn. You know, just make sure you don't roll that one and take Grimaldus, right? Now, the other thing you need to be aware of is that you can't fall back. So if you your opponent can potentially use this to screw you over. But what I would say is that's unlikely. Realistically, what's going to happen with this one is you're going to put the vow on, the, you're going to get this vow off, you're going to get the litany off, and you're going to go into the enemy unit and you're going to smash them to pieces. And what more than likely the enemy will want to do is to try and fall back and then, you know, counter charge you with something else or whatever. Like basically, that's more likely to happen. If they don't fall back, then that's fine because you probably want to be in combat. You don't really want to be falling back as a Black Templar. You want to be in there, in the thick of it, in the combat all the time, right? So either the enemy will try and do something funny with this or, you know, I just don't see it happening. Realistically, you're happy to stay in combat with people. There are some occasions where that isn't the case, but then you should just die with honour. That is the Templar way. Am I right, guys? It's accept any challenge, no matter the odds. It's not go in there with all the advantages, and then if things go a bit wrong, oh, well, we don't want the challenge anymore. No, you are accepting the challenge, no matter the odds. You just have to be aware that sometimes your opponent might be able to get, you know, get one over you with this, but it's unlikely. 
I don't know, you tell me guys, but how I find a lot of combats going 40k is one side charges the other side, they fight, and then essentially the, po the person that got charged tends to try and pull back and either counter charge something else or shoot the enemy to death. That tends to be how it is. Look, I don't know many people that want to stay in combat with the big block of crusaders. Not even like custodies or anything like that. They don't want to do it, okay? Like, you don't want to stay in combat with a big block crusader. It's just not something that's good for your health. So, I, whilst it is a disadvantage, I don't think it's really a very big one. And those are the ways that you can get into the Assault Doctrine from turn one with three units. Now, you can imagine what's going to happen. If you get six Crusaders, you get you get them into your opponent's lives, turn one, turn two, everyone's in the Assault Doctrine. It's absolutely massive. You are going to rip and tear. You are going to kill, pray, burn, every moment of that turn so it's a really powerful strategy and it's really simple and it really leans into especially if you're like me that black tide tactic where you're like i'm just going to be all over you like a bad rash all the time you're going to hate it i'm going to be really powerful and you're just going to be struggling to deal with it whilst i'm basically fighting you on all the objectives and winning on points and killing you at the same time double win so i find that this tactic this way of getting into salt doctrine army wide pretty much Really, really powerful when you're using a Black Tide, but of course, it can be powerful for almost any Black Templar army if you build into it. But that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe and a comment and all that kind of good stuff. And if you really enjoyed today's video and you want to see more Black Templar content, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to the very generous support of my channel members, of my patrons, that I do this shit full time now, which is just crazy. And the fact that I'm now doing it full time means I can expand my repertoire. I can, of course, keep guard as the core content of the channel, but I can explore the factions. I can use those lessons. I can just have more fun and I can do more things. So if you want to see more Black Templar content, hell, if you want to see other factions on the channel, ones that I don't cover at the moment, become a channel member, support me, and I'll be able to do that. So massive thank you to all of my current channel members and Patreon supporters. And I just want to take a moment to say a thank you to our latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So thank you to Nuki Brown, William Hale, Kevin B, Def Noise Marine, Ricky Brown, Humi Lug, Matt2001, Silver Prepper, and Furry Curry. Massive thank you to all of you guys for doing your part. I also want to say a big thank you to the latest Patreon supporters as well. Massive thank you to Jack Pascal, Stuart Francis, Harvey Hansen, Hans Anderson, Philip French, Garth Vader, Andrew, and Papa Vosler for becoming Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for all of your support. Now, last but absolutely certainly not least, I want to say a personal, heartfelt thank you. I want to bring the tone down a little here, guys, and just make sure that it comes across sincere. I want to say a personal, heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the guys that are signed up at the war mass level, and honestly, they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting this channel. So a personal Massive thank you, 07 down in the comment section, guys, for Navy Veteran, Philip French, Alex Stengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Ross Miller, Tom Sutton, and August Varney. Massive thank you to all of you guys. Your support... I know I say it in every video, but I don't want you to think I don't mean it. I don't think it's just a platitude. Your support truly is life-changing. You have changed my life. I am doing this full-time, and a big part of that is you as my top-tier Patreon supporters. So, massive thank you to every single one of you. That's it for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.